triple love and YouTube friends. I think I'm going to call that a success finally. Oh, we fought with it last weekend for a little bit. Um, probably a couple hours I fought with it trying to get it to run. I had a couple issues going on. Um, but we're in an attempt to try and get Trenton started now. And we're just going to go through the steps I went through this morning because I think it helped, but I have a feeling of what it was all along, and we'll talk about that later. So we're going to go ahead and take out the injectors on Trentons and clean them. We're at such an easy point to do this right now, and it's probably really good preventative maintenance. And we don't know how long these throttle bodies have been sitting around with these injectors and maybe gas in them. And so figured, what the heck, let's just do a video of us cleaning them out and putting them back in and hopefully by the end of this video we have two of these six and a half rxls running hopefully so one trick i did do is these screws can really be a bugger to get loose there's not loctite on them but my goodness are they in there tight a number three would be the correct screwdriver to use in it but that don't work it seems like it wants to skip you can use a big flat blade in there that seemed to want to skip or you can use a square drive down inside that number three even that didn't seem to want to grab i tested them all and they just and i was warned that they can be a son of a gun to get out so i just went to old trusty vice gripper clamp it right on the head good and tight and it was literally just a crack 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 i did all 12 of them this morning because i did both sleds at the same time got all the screws loose on both of them at the same time a minute tops it took me to get them all loose no cussing, no inventing new words, no throwing tools, no nothing. It was super easy. So I would suggest if you're trying to get your screws loose on your fuel rail like that, just crack them loose, clamp a vice grip on there. It doesn't mess the screw up or nothing. And it's, it, it will save you a lot of headaches. So Trenton's going to go ahead, pull the fuel rail loose. We're going to pop the injectors out and I'm going to show you a cleaning method. It's no secret on how to do it. Um, but I'm just going to go through the process I did this morning on mine. I did pull parts sled in the shop this morning to uh, fix a hand warmer on it. One of my hand warmers isn't working, so I want to fix that. And I had my decal lady make up a couple more decals for me, and this was one of them. And I just think that just was the icing on the cake. Really topped it off, getting that Ultra Snow King special, and I had her put SPX in there. Um, never had it, so uh, they never made an Ultra SPX Snow King special. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it just kind of ties it all together now. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Also have two bag in the shop right now. Had to put a CDI in this thing. My gosh, the CDI went out in it. And I have a feeling it is from the LED bulbs that we tried in both of these sleds. The LED bulb took the stator out in this one. And I suspect that the LED bulb took the CDI box out in this one. So no way am I ever going to try an LED bulb again. So yeah, we got the... Um, a new CDI I put in there and let's go ahead and clean up some injectors. All right, so here's my setup. Carbon choke cleaner, uh, took a valve stem, took the core out of it. I put an O-ring inside of there and slid the straw in, duct taped it to the straw. One less thing to try and hang on to here. Um, used one of the uh, fuel injector connectors off of another harness I had around here. So I just took that off, nine volt battery, taped the wire to the one side. So I only got a fight with one wire, but Trenton's still gonna help me. It's just easier if you got two sets of hands trying to do this. You're trying to hold a wire, trying to hold an injector, trying to squirt this. So yeah, it can be a pain in the butt. So just take it on the intake side. You could take the O-ring off too, but I'm just, I've been leaving it on there. And uh, just slide it onto your valve stem. Connector on. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a clean one. Go ahead. 
When I did mine earlier, I found it easier to actually stick the, the injector up into the fuel rail and then drop it down into the throttle body. So I kind of already warned Trenton about that. It's just easier to stick it up into the fuel rail and make sure all your O-rings are in place. There's one down here. There's one up at the top. Just make sure everything's in place before you set it down in there. We'll get it down in there and we'll get the six screws back in and we'll go from there. call that success number two today put the wrenches down and crack the beers boys wow that's awesome I'm gonna explain what we went through to make this happen you watched us clean the injectors we put them back in and as usual I forget to turn the video on for the startup typical but I'm gonna explain everything we did super simple literally in under five minutes we had it running and we struggled last weekend numerous times trying to make both of these run and we both just threw in the towel and just gave up we didn't touch them all week and um yeah and so this morning i was like okay we're getting them going and let me talk about what i actually did here then to make it happen so we cleaned the injectors and then i went right down the line and i just unplugged all the injectors got them out of the play got rid of those pulled the plugs gave them all a little bit of go-go love juice put that in there screwed the plugs back in and uh, Trenton fired it up, and it literally just starts running right away by squirting them cylinders like that. And I just went down the line and just started plugging the injectors in, plugging them in, and you could tell it was starting to come around, come around, and then boom, it was running all on its own. And then, um, so here's my theory. This, now I'm going to go into my theory, because it was that, literally that easy by unplugging the injectors, priming the cylinders, firing it up, and within seconds, I started plugging them injectors in, and it took over and ran by itself. My theory is air in the fuel system. So the injectors aren't atomizing the fuel correctly. They're, they're firing lazy, so it's flooding the engine at first. I don't know, this could be just a crazy off the wall idea. I'm running with it. But both of them, the fuel systems were completely gutted on them. They've been dry for years. And the only thing I could figure out is being that there was air in the fuel, into the fuel system, it had to bleed out before the injectors would actually correctly atomize the fuel. You all can tell me I'm wrong, but that is literally how easy it was to get them going. But getting the engine actually started on a prime system and then just went and started plugging each injector in one by one and it took over and ran flawlessly. Crazy, but we're super stoked to have both of them running now. We just gotta go ahead and put his air box in now and uh, get the computer all sitting in there and stuff and, and start to button these things up. We're gonna probably put the hoods on them even today too because we got them both running now. So now we can stick the hoods on and uh, start the details of finishing stuff up. Um, I, think, I think we should close the video out with firing them all up. First, I wanna thank um, a person that donated one of the last parts on Two Bag. This is a sled we built for my daughter and uh, Trenton did a ton of the work and I worked on it also and we had somebody donate this headlight cover here a purple headlight cover super cool Jeff Carey actually made the connection Jeff sold her a snowmobile that had this cover on it um, and he asked if she would be interested in donating it to this build and she did and her name is Angie Hernandez her her rent Hernandez, I'm sorry, Angie Hernandez. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Angie. But Angie Hernandez donated that final part on the snowmobile. It's awesome. Uh, we were trying to, do, we went with the whole purple theme here with, you know, everybody in the 90s was trying to help Purple's buddy. And I think we tastefully did a, one hell of a purple theme on this sled. 
and the last, and then Nathan Kinney made the bar pad for it because we run these motocross bars on all of our sled. They're a CR125 motocross bar. It's got like a two inch rise and they're a little bit forward. They're a couple inches forward and I cut an inch off of each end to get the right width and then put all the controls of a player's control on there and then he's been making these bar pads for us. It's kind of a Pro X bar pad, he said. And they fit on here great. It covers up the crossbar. It covers up all the wires and everything. They look just absolutely amazing on there. I love that he custom made these covers for us because he made a bunch of them. I got a black one he made on uh, part sled also. It just finishes it off really nice to have that bar pad on there. And I might even get some iron-on uh, decals yet to put on there, maybe Polaris, or maybe I'll even get the sled name. I'm, I haven't decided on that yet. Or maybe just go with Indy or... Who, who knows? I'll, I'll, if you guys got any suggestions, I love comments. And maybe there's a suggestion. What should I put on these bar pads? I, I'm always open for suggestions. Maybe the model of the sled. Maybe it says Indy. Maybe it says Wedge. I don't know. But you know, throw some ideas out because I love the comments. And um, so I think this is pretty much close to a wrap on these RXLs. We'll get them back together. We'll finish putting them together today. And then we'll get some video of them out doing a couple test hits with them. We have zero snow. Uh, Trenton's actually changing the oil in the lawn tractor today so we can start mowing the grass because I mean, it's almost turning green. The tr actually, the trees are gonna start budding. First part of February, we have zero snow. Minnesota's had a total of seven inches so far in the city's area. Um, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. We have none at our cabin either, so there's just absolutely no riding to be done for us anyway. So that's so why we've been just building, building sleds. So Trent, why don't you walk around? Let's maybe hopefully get every one of them fired up for at the end of this video. And thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for all the comments. Like I said, suggestions on what should I put on these bar pads. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what everybody comes up with. But let's, let's try and fire them all up, Trenton.